Good, how are you? You want any good? Just started, no, nothing yet. You want me to take these in? Uh, you got no fish on board? No fish. Alright. Uh, charter? No, no charter. Watch. He's good, he's good. Alright. Hey. Alright, we well, all have a good one. Okay. Be careful after. Sure. Yes, sir, I got a radar on. Thank you. Guys, here's our spread. We have three boards on each side. Let's see if you can see them. It's foggy out here, of course. See that yellow board way out there. We have one here, the closest one. Then we have two TOS planer floats. You can see how close these rods are together. Those reels are, I don't know, three or four feet apart, probably. And uh, I don't know if you can see those floats out there. There's an orange one and a green one. And you can see they are a good, geez, it's hard, really hard to tell in this distance. I'd say 40 foot apart. So from four foot to 40 foot, just by letting about, I don't know, 100 feet of line out. And then we have our three boards on this side, the orange boards. And what I usually do is I have my most forward board has the most line out. Sometimes I'll put a split shot on that forward board. And then the middle board has a little less line out and the furthest board has almost no line out behind it. All right, my favorite hook for pulling eels, owner of Mewdoo, white wire. With the seven knot right there. It is an offset circle hook. I like offsets when we're moving. I use inline circle hooks when the line is slack or on the bottom like when we're chunking. When we're moving, I use offsets. This is my favorite hook. And we're going to go ahead and put an eel on here. Get that in the water. My second favorite, actually everything else, these are three hooks that are a tie for second place after the owner muted, okay? Eagle Claw, Trocar, Lancet, you can see it's a cutting point. I hope you can see that. There's a blade on that point. It's also offset. All of these hooks, straight shank. I don't use a snell ever. After that, also straight shank. Mustad Demon Circle. Straight shank. Needle point, not a cutting point. Great hook right there. For chunking, Dai Daiichi. Sorry about that. Daiichi. Circle hook right there. You can see it's a straight shank as well. They also have the super chunk. This is a regular, but a super chunk has a little tiny barb on the shank. You keep your bait from sliding up and rehooking on the point. Great idea. Those are my favorite hooks right there. All circles, as you notice. And uh, I don't use a snell. I use a Palomar knot. That's how I do it. Right now, we're, let's see, we're two for two today. We're three for three yesterday. We haven't missed a single hook up yet. I'm not gonna jinx myself. But these, these hooks get the job done. They button up and stay buttoned up. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Just my favorite hooks. All right, finally, just watch my videos. You know I hate using weight. I try to avoid weight at any cost. But these eels, it works perfect with that presentation with no weight because they're always fighting to get down. So we speed up and slow the boat and we can control how high the eel is in that water column with our speed. So you'll see when you put this eel in the water, he'll fight to get down. I don't know if you can see that. See that? There's no weight on him. He's just fighting to get down. See how he fights to stay down? He had a fish on right here. Come on, John. You got it? Hold the right eye over the top of this one. <laughs> I called it. Wow, that's a monster. Let it go, John. Keep your eye high, buddy. Sweet! Come on back. Kyle, put that game in there. Oh, stay on him. Stay on him. <laughs> <laughs> on the reel. The big fish. Jeez. Look at the reel, Kyle. Do what you got, John. Eh, we're fish. You know, 
You know how it goes. Stripo Grande is what we got. Stripo Grande. Did you see that fish come up and smash behind the lure gun? Yes, sir. His first fish, oh. just like that. We're trying to get the green <laughs> float out of the way, and that fish is just taking line. He's got to keep that rod extra high because see how flat that line's coming off? I don't know if you can tell, but that, that line is parallel to the water almost. When it's parallel to the water like that, uh, you lose your angle. So you've got to really keep the rod high to keep the rod bent. We don't want a straight rod. How's that real looking down there? Oh, you got plenty of line. That's a big fish. The fish didn't know it was cooked at first. That happens a lot of times. Move the drag it. Jack, you don't find You're good right there. You got plenty of time. Now, right now, that reel is getting smaller, right? Because line's coming off. So we don't want to make a mistake and tighten our drag. The smaller the spool, the harder it is for the fish to take line off it. The fish is making our spool smaller because it drained a lot of line. So we don't need to inch that drag up any. He's already tightening it himself. Big mistake, people panic a little bit, so they tighten the drag after the spool is half the size. No good, if you have four pounds of drag on there and now your spool is half the size, you may have eight pounds of drag. I don't know the exact number, but it can go up quite a bit. So you don't want to increase it because it's already been increased. We don't want to reel these lines in because you know if one is here, you know there's others. And with striped bass, there could be easily be 10 fish following his fish right now or more there could be a whole mess of big stripers following his fish so if he can keep these lines out that's what we want to do double up you know This one, a little too heavy to stick out. <laughs> tell you you're gonna pull forward and pull that disc at the same time okay. and you're gonna pull forward to pull it out of the mouth. Okay. Pull forward hard. Okay. Man is that pretty or what? Oh that's so cool. Congrats. Thank you. Baby boy. Good job cop. Let's get another. <laughs>